All right. Welcome, everyone, uh, back from a wonderful lunch. I think I could have had maybe five more of those. <laughs> they were amazing. Thank you. Um, and um, yeah, so we've concluded our first part of the day. We're now moving on to the second part. We're going to have a lot of practical examples of migration and identity that are both taking place here in Norway and also in the United States. So the first one up is Dr. Peri Il uh, Ilka Tinkman, uh, who also has a birthday today. So just want to say happy birthday. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Yes, happy birthday. Um, and you are going to hold a session on micro-integration of refugees and migrants into the local um, society. That's so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, dear Mr. Ambassador. Thank you for your uh, great hospitality. Dear to Heyerdahl Institute, thank you for the invitation. Um, dear all, it's, a, it's an honor. I'm should I stand here? Okay. Um, I'm honored and I'm very nervous. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, uh, my name is Peri Ilka Tinschmann and that means I am uh, a mixed person. <laughs> I, I am a, a result of the Turkish migrants to Germany. So my father is Turkish, my mom is German, my husband is Norwegian, my son is American. So um, <laughs> I can stand here for an hour. <laughs> so, um, I am uh, I'm talking about uh, micro-integration of refugees and migrants into the local society. And when I'm saying the local society, then I mean the region of Greenland. And that is a little bit further south of uh, Oslo. And it includes the cities uh, Sheen, Poshrun, Pamle, and Siljan, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm so nervous now. Um, would you, could you just uh, jump a little bit? Yeah, stand here. So uh, everything what we heard today was here, and now I take you down. <laughs> now I take you to the micro level. Um, I founded uh, LOB, uh, my association, five years ago. LOB had birthday yesterday, and if you might remember what was five years ago, go on the 9th of November, I thought it was time for a little bit love and peace. And that is why my uh, association called SLOPE, because that is the short version of love and peace. I let you thinking about what was on the 9th of November, <laughs> because we shouldn't be too political. Um, we have a mission or um, a target, and that is um, to integrate refugees in our area into uh, the local society, uh, and I believe that is the only way is by getting them educated or into jobs. Um, and of course, you have to speak the language, but um, uh, just if you are in work, then you are actually integrated in a society. That is what I self um, recognized when I came to Norway. It took me only two years to get a job here, so, and um, this is what we are doing. And we do this by a new concept, or by our concept, and we call this micro-integration. And, okay, I shouldn't move, I understand. Macro, as you're all uh, academics, you know that, um, is uh, the highest level, and this is what we heard so far today. Uh, this is where integration concepts are developed, government, politicians <laughs> um, uh, develop some um, concepts, and then we have the meso level. Um, this I often can call um, a, like multicultural dinner or language coffees, maybe a little bit. Um, Camilla is maybe with her vintage coffee a little bit in this area, and um, or libraries, or as we also have in Schien, Büdel Hüsner. I think ev actually everyone speaks Norwegian and understands that. So, but we are on the on the lowest level, and that means the individual level. And uh, I love to talk about, or I love to hear today about the identity, and that's exactly what we try to um, cover up. We see the individual, we see the identity they had before they came to Norway. Because um, in the institutional system, it's often so that um, 
now you are in Norway and there was no life before. And that is very painful because there is a history, there is an identity and there is a life from before. So um, we, um, the reason why I, I founded uh, LOBE was I was working as a teacher, trainer, consultant at the Volke Universität. Um, and uh, there we were working with a lot of refugees who were in Amur Kirches. This is from NAF, from the, from the um, <coughs> Belfort sta State uh, organized courses for those who need maybe a little bit more training in Norwegian or in the labor market, etc. So being there, I was wondering why are these people still not speaking Norwegian, even though they were three years in, in the introductions program. I'm talking about refugees now. And um, the answer was very simple, because they had so much trauma, so much worries, that they couldn't concentrate on the lessons. And then I thought, OK, let's <clears throat> tidy up in these problems so that your head is free, that we can get you out and work. And um, that is the micro-integration. That is the main work I do in my daily business. The people are coming to me, telling me about their problems, and we are sitting down and um, trying to solve these problems. In the beginning, it was like, let's read what NAF is writing in their VTAX and letters and understand this. Um, and. Uh, by now, it's getting more and more. The problems are getting bigger. We are more like a crisis center now than uh, get people um, or just solve the small um, problems. And um, uh, I want to mention that in our region, 40% um, of the, of the um, refugees are unemployed. And that has nothing to do with their education or something. Um, the professors left. But that has something to do because they called Ali or Mohammed. So, and that is frustrating. I experienced this by myself. When, you, when your name is Peri Ilka Tinschmann, then it also takes a while before you're invited to, to a job interview. Um, I was so close to change my name into Penilla Aune. Aune is the name of my husband. Um, but then in the last moment, I decided, no, that is my identity. My identity is Pierre Ilka Tinschmann, and I am getting a job with this name. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Um, OK, what, what uh, leads 40% are unemployed. What does this mean for the whole family? Yes, of course, uh, child poverty. And uh, this is unfortunately in our region also over average compared to the rest of Norway. So there is a, there is a need for integration, new integration concepts in our region, and micro-integration is one of that. How do we work? When a person is coming to me and saying, I actually have, that is just an example which happened lately, um, I have a PhD in biology from, um, from an African, uh, African country. And um, it's actually um, uh, um, it's uh, approved. approved, thank you, um, <laughs> by uh, no good. So uh, there shouldn't be any reason why this person is not getting a job as the university. She tried and tried, and she was not even invited to an interview. So she ended up by uh, uh, washing toilets in a hotel in, in Telemark. And uh, when she took contact with me, um, she was crying. And, um, and uh, I said to her, what do you want to do? And she said, yeah, if I can just get a better job in the hotel, like serving. I said, OK, but what do you really want to do? Yeah, of course, I want to work in an, as a biologic uh, in an institute in a university. And said, so, yeah, OK, then I know a professor there. Let's, let's call him. She got a job last night. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. 
not all these stories end like this, of course. We, have, uh, we are dealing with very traumatized people, and we are not a health institution. So, of course, a lot of people I have to um, lead forward to another institution. But um, what, what's different with, different with our LOB con, um, uh, in, in relation to, to, public, to the public sector is we are available 24-7, also at the weekends, because crisis doesn't stop at 4 o'clock or in summertime at 3 o'clock. Um, and um, we, uh, we take the time it needs. So it's not that we have just 15 minutes for a person coming to us. When a person is coming to us, then it's between 15 minutes and 15 months. And um, as you can see, then, then the resources are limited. So um, uh, it's, we don't have the huge numbers because we take so much time for each of uh, each LOPI, as we call our users. Um, and uh, still, uh, so far, um, this year we, we solved like uh, 240 cases. So um, we are, yeah, we are pretty pretty proud of this. And um, I don't know, do I have, how, how's the time? Can I? You're doing fine. I'm, I'm doing fine. Yeah. I just want to tell a little bit what the people are asking for. A lot of the things are not understanding the um, uridis, the, the, the official text on, on uh, authorities' homepages. That leads to a devil circle because if you don't understand it, how can you apply for economic help or emergency help? And that ends up then that on the Friday evening I get a call and uh, have to go to a family maybe with five, four children who are sitting there without any food. Um, that unfortunately increased the last two years or in the pandemic years. Um, the people were isolated even more as they were before. Uh, that was due to all the authorities were in home office. We also got the, um, we also got uh, the order to stay at home, but we resist. <laughs> So we had our doors open because that was very important for our users. So um, the last two years, it, of course, there were not so many people we got out in work because there were no work. Um, everything was closed, closed down. But since summer alone, just this summer, we got four people out in work. And that is, sounds little, but you have to see they're hanging a whole, they're hanging 20 people on this four people because these are families with with a lot of children and um, and we get these families out of the welfare state system so that saves also a lot of um, money for our comuna and um, yeah um, why are we so successful? And I think we are. Uh, that is because we are a non-governmental organis organization. That means we have no, um, we, we don't need to follow any, any um, statistics. I have, no, I have to be very diplomatic <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> um, we, we are not, um, uh, connected to any religion, to any party, party political party. Uh, everyone is welcome in our house, no matter what um, or where they come from or believe in. And, um, and our services are for free. So, um, and that is, it's beautiful to see that even these people coming to us who were actually in a war before together, they are sitting in our, in our um, offices as friends, and that is, that is very nice to see. So that is the only, the only um, rule I have in my house. There's no political discussions as long as, as they are in my house or in our um, offices, and, um, and uh, no discrimination. So, and uh, I also want to say the last thing, um, I'm happy to see that here are a lot of men because usually uh, integration, the integration theme on the micro level is a very female uh, subject, unfortunately. Um, I just want to 
make clear that integration work is not uh, a knitting club on a Sunday afternoon. This is this is hard work. This uh, there there are lives involved. There are individuals involved. There are identities involved, and um, it's very important for me that this is clear and understand that this is a this is a hard work and not kuschelig. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, that's for me. I'm too nervous to to say more, but um, I hope you got a little impression of how micro integration works in our region. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, I think it's so interesting that you, as an immigrant to Norway, have started this because I think that you have a lot more resources and you know exactly what it feels to come to Norway and you know where people are struggling. So I think it's amazing. I would love to hear more about Lupe. Love the name too, Low and Peace, right? <laughs>